going to teach uh, briefly, and then uh, maybe we can have some time to pray, and then uh, we would have communion as well, uh, uh, because we need to manage our time well on days like this. Um, because we are in this time of prayer and fasting, I'm spending much of this time teaching on various aspects of prayer. And so today, I'm teaching on the relationship between faith and prayer. So my message is simply titled, Pray Believing. Pray Believing. And it's going to be based on Mark chapter 11, verse 24. And Jesus made these comments after his disciples wondered why the words he had spoken to a fig tree had come to pass. And Jesus used the occasion to teach on the relationship between faith and prayer. And, and so I'm going to teach briefly on that. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them or you will have them. Earlier in verse 23, Jesus taught on the relationship between faith in God and the words we speak. And then in verse 24, the next sentence, he's teaching on the relationship between actively having faith in God, believing in God, and prayer. Our prayers are intensified by fasting, but they are powered by faith. Fasting does not power your faith, or your prayer. Fasting is not the power of prayer. Fasting creates intensity acceleration, intensity for your prayer. But the power behind every prayer is faith. So no matter how much you pray and no matter how long you fast, if you don't know how to operate by faith, your prayer will not be answered. Prayer is powered by faith. It is intensified by faith. Fasting. So as we are fasting during this season, we are intensifying our prayer. But there has to be power driving our prayer. And faith or believing is that power. Now when you look at the verse or the passage uh, we just read, Jesus talks about there are four important verbs that Jesus used in this passage. And I'm going to pick those four verbs and deal with them. The first one is the verb pray. Pray is an active word. It's a verb. It means it's a doing word. Pray. Ask God for something. You can't pray without praying. If you're praying, you must pray. It's a doing word. Jesus linked prayer with another verb, ask. So prayer is asking. And specifically, it is asking that is directed to God. When I pray, when you pray, when we pray, we are asking. But we're not just asking, we are asking God. You're not asking your neighbor, you're not asking your friend, you're not asking the universe. You know, these days I hear people use all kinds of phrases, the universe will bring it to you. The universe can't bring anything to anybody. The universe has no power because the universe is created by God. Don't get into this new age kind of spirituality where God is replaced by the universe. The universe doesn't answer prayer. The universe doesn't bless you. The universe doesn't do anything. The universe just exists with no conscience, with no power, with no self-awareness. But behind the universe is the creator of the universe. He is a way maker. He is the one who makes things happen for us. So Christians don't pray to the universe. We don't speak to the air. We don't trust the universe to do it for us because the universe can do nothing for you. God is the doer. All right? So when we pray, 
We are asking, but we're asking God. We're asking God. It's very important. And the reason this is important is, can you imagine somebody uh, says to you, listen, I want to come and see you. They book an appointment with you. And he says, I want to come and see you at 11.30 today, uh, and I want to discuss something very important with you. And you say, sure, come, come and see me at home or in the office, 11.30, I come. So 11.30, they show up to come and ask you for something. And when they show up, they start talking to you about the thing, but they are playing on their phone. Uh, please, I need you to, uh, I don't know whether you want to give me some money or whatever, whatever, whatever. So you are asking but you are not focusing on the person you are asking from. You are playing on your phone. It is the same way when you come before God, and sometimes I see people praying, and they think prayer is just mouthing words. Prayer is not just about mouthing words. It's not being playing on your phone and going, and, and just WhatsApping somebody and thinking that once you are saying words, you are addressing God. No, if you are addressing God, you have to be conscious that he is listening to you and you must be aware of him. You cannot go and ask somebody or have, uh, ask somebody for something. Whilst you are asking the person for the thing, you are absent-minded, you are looking around. Oh, wow. Ah. And, and, and the person is sitting down wondering, did you come to see me or you came to admire the ceiling? The same thing with prayer. Many times people just talk, but they don't talk to God. People pray, but they don't pray to God. People, and sometimes they think they're praying a lot. And yes, it's a lot of talking, but whom are you talking to? Prayer is asking that is focused on God. So Jesus says, when you pray, when you ask me, or when you ask God for something, that's the first thing. Prayer must be specific and scriptural. He says, what things, whatever things, when we pray, we are talking about specific things, specific things in our lives. And our prayer must be based on something specific and something scriptural. That means that you cannot uh, just say, Lord, I'm praying about this thing. What are you praying about? Many times people will come to Jesus. An obviously blind man comes to Jesus. And Jesus asks him the most ridiculous question. What do you want? Obviously the guy is blind. But Jesus asks, what do you want? Why? Because prayer must be specific. Don't assume that God knows it. Mouth it, say it, be specific. Lord, I need you to deliver me from this situation. Lord, I need so much from you. Lord, I need you to turn around this situation. Be very specific in prayer. And it has to be scriptural. That means it has to be consistent with God, God's character. So that's the first thing Jesus says about prayer. First, we must pray. It is to God. Secondly, the second active verb, in the passage is the word believe. Believe is not passive, it's active. It means to trust that God is able. Believing is about exercising active faith in God, not passive faith, but active faith in God. It is faith at work. And when we pray, believing is critical to prayer. Prayer is not just about what you are saying, it's about believing. We must believe before we pray, we must believe when we pray, and we must keep believing after we pray. Believing envelops prayer. And, and these days, you know, and, and sometimes you hear me being critical about these things. Not that I don't want people to pray, but I see people just praying all kinds and, and forming bad habits in prayer. You know, so you find young men and they're praying to go, yeah, bo, yeah, bo, yeah bo. and you're asking, first, who are you? Yeah, bo, to yeah, bo. You, you think that's what you're telling, you're, you're telling God? You're talking to him? Or you are just displaying to your colleagues that you have prayer stamina. 
What, what are you doing? And people think that is, that is intensive prayer. But who is it to? Prayer is not just talking to yourself. It's talking to God. You must be conscious I'm talking to God. And when you're talking to God, you, are, you have to believe. You have to believe. You must trust God and his ability and his faithfulness. Prayer is about believing that God is able. And believing God is based on how well we know him. You cannot believe somebody if you don't know the person. How well we know God is based on how well we know what his word says about him. That is why the scripture rightly says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Faith is not you squeezing your faith and saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Faith is simply saying, this is what God says about himself, and I believe so. I trust it is so. So the Bible says God is good, and I believe it. So when we say that we believe, it means that we are assured of God's character. We are assured of God's character. To be assured of God's character, that he is good, that God is kind, that God is faithful, that God is right at all times, that God is not far from me, that God watches over me, that God is my provider, that God is my deliverer, that God is able. So God says, I can do it, and I believe he can do it. And so when I talk to him about my problem, I don't have to worry. Why? Because he says I can do it, and I believe he can do it. But if I talk to him about my problem, and I'm still worried about the problem, it means that although I say I believe him, I don't believe him. I don't believe he can do it. Something is happening to me. God says, I am good. He says, Lord, this is bad. He says, I am good. And he says, I am, and you say, Lord, this is a bad situation. But I am good. But Lord, the situation is very bad, though. But I am good. If you believe God is good, then when you pray, you believe that he's going to work out this situation according to his character, which is good. So all things will work out together for your good. Why? Because God is good. So although the situation is bad, God is good. And I pray and I believe God is good. The situation will turn out good. Why? Because God is good. So faith is simply accepting. This is what God says he is. This is who he says he is. And I accept it. Even if what I'm going through is very, very bad, I am confident in God's character. That he's a kind God. He's merciful. That he's always right. I cannot trust God for him to make a mistake. So God is not going to use your situation to be the first time he makes a mistake. Your situation is not going to be the first time that it was written. And in those days, a man prayed, and God made a mistake. <laughs> no, your, your, yours is not going to be the first one. He's been right before creation. He was right with creation. He was right before you were born. He is right as you are existing. He is right after you die. He is always right. And if you believe God is always right, then when you pray and say, Lord, I trust you that in this situation you will manifest your will and I trust that your will will always be right. So I surrender to your will and I rejoice in you. 
That's faith. Why is it faith? Because it is based on God's character, that he is good, he's all-powerful, he's all-merciful, and he's right at all times. When you pray, believe. Not only when you pray, but before you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. After you pray, believe. You pray once, but you believe for a long time. Prayer is not about repetition of petition. Prayer is about believing after the petition that even though I don't see it happening, God is making it happen for me. So those, that's the second verb Jesus used in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Third one, receive. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. He didn't say when you pray, you have it. He said, believe that you receive it. Receive is basically to consider that God has done it. So at the time I am praying, when I present my request before God, I have to consider that God has done it. Receiving is as important as asking. We ask by faith, we receive by faith. We ask by faith, we receive by faith. We ask by faith, we receive by faith. When we say something is done by faith, it means it is done based on God's character. I ask, Lord, help me. Why do I ask God to help me? Because his character is he's a helper. Lord, I receive. On what basis am I receiving? Based on his character. That when we ask, we will receive. Receiving doesn't mean you have it. It simply means you consider that it is done. And after we pray, God says, Jesus says, Receive. Believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them. So receiving happens immediately after we ask. It's actually part of our prayer. And how do we express receiving? We express it with thanksgiving. So when I pray, I must be thankful before I see the answer. So that's why when we pray, we say, Father, I ask you to touch my life and do something new in my life. And tomorrow as I go to the office, this situation in the office, I, I thank you, Lord. I, I ask, Lord, that you do something about it. Or, and you talk specifically about what you want God to do. And then you say, Lord, I thank you that you have done it. Now, at the time you say, I thank you that you have done it, you have no evidence that the situation has changed. But what you have done is you have received it. Receiving is done by faith. Receiving is done by... Receiving is done by... Believing is done by... Asking is done by... Receiving is done by... And faith is trusting God's character. These days I hear people say, GDNI patapa. <laughs> Have you heard people use it? Faith is not patapa. Faith, faith is not like uh, being brave. Faith is not about being brazen. Faith is not about even being courageous. There's a big difference between courage and faith. Faith is not having willpower. No. Faith is believing God's character. 
that who he says he is, he is. And what he says is so. That's all. That's faith. So I receive based on what God says, not based on what is in my hand, but based on what God says. I receive because his character affirms that when I ask something, he does it. Now, if you don't know this, your prayer, you know, people think that God will hear them because they make their case very sorry. Mr. Wu, Mr. Wu. Or oh, therefore, yeah, mommy. Or oh, therefore, oh, therefore. Ashanti's do that. They, they, they've mastered it. Oh, therefore, oh, right there. Oh, therefore, oh, yeah, mommy. Listen, you, you think that you can sweet talk God? No. He says, I am who I am. Trust me. Finito. No, nothing. All you do is to say, Father, you are good. Your promises are real. You are a faithful God. You have said you would do this. I ask you to do it in my life. And as I ask you, I thank you that you have heard me. How do I know you have heard me? Because your word says you have heard me. Not because I had a telephone call from heaven that you heard me. But your word says you have heard me. And I thank you for it that it is done. And don't go repeating yourself. I ask you again, oh, Lord, remember last week I talked about it. No, This week I'm, I've come before. Hey, God, I've come. I've come, oh, Lord. I've come, oh, Lord. I've come, oh, Lord. That is what you do when you go to the fetish. That is what you do when you go to the abosom. But when you come before God, you are not before the abosom. You are before the creator of the universe. He's not looking for you to cut yourself and, and, and prostrate yourself and make your life miserable and punish yourself before he answers your prayer. What kind of a good God is that? That may be your village God. That may be the river God. But the God of the Bible, that's not how he is. We don't miserable our life for God to answer our prayer. He says, when you pray, believe that you receive. Somebody say, I receive. Why do you know you've received? Why? Because of God's character. Because he said so. It's not because I feel it. I feel I've received your feeling. When you have malaria, you have a feeling. It doesn't mean anything. Your feeling means nothing. It's everything based on the character of God, which he has revealed in the Bible. And the final verb Jesus used in this verse, and you shall have it. You, Jesus makes a distinction between receiving and having. Receiving is not the same as having. But then he says, because you believe you receive, you will have it. Having it means to obtain the manifestation of what God has done. That is when the miracle has happened right there, feely feely, is there in your, in your face. You can see it. You've obtained the manifestation. You would have it. This is when we can show what God has done. And most of the time, there is a time lapse between receiving and having. So I believe I receive, but I don't have it. Now, when I believe I've received and I don't have it, what should I do? You stand with thanksgiving. You still continue thanking God because you are affirming, you are a faithful God, you are a good God. I spoke about this thing last year, and I thank you, Lord, you're working on it. I give you praise. I thank you, Lord, that it is done. I thank you, Lord. So every morning you wake up. Thank you, Lord, that you are working on this situation and you solve it. Don't go again. Hey, I did. Mr. Wo, Mr. Wo, Mr. I mean, you are making God look like some, somebody who doesn't hear. You are making God look like some insensitive God. Thank him. 
Trust him. Thank him. You wait between receiving and having. And he says, and you shall have it. You will have it. That's when you have your testimony. That's when you have the thing in your hand. Receiving is spiritual. Having is physical. Receiving is spiritual. Having is physical. I receive it spiritually and I have it physically. And when we have what we ask for, what must we do? We must be confident to testify of what God has done. Every person that Jesus healed had to master the confidence to act out what they have. The blind man had to open his eyes. The lame man had to use his legs. The man with a withered hand had to stretch out his hand. Testifying is not only about what we say, it's also about what we do. When God answered Hannah's prayer for a child and gave Hannah Samuel, she brought the child to God and said, this is what I pledge, I testify you have done it. So sometimes when we want to testify, it's not just about, oh God, I thank you that you've done it. You ask God to bless you financially. You have to bring what he gave you to say, Lord, I testify you have done it. You don't pocket all the money and say, thank you, Lord, in my back pocket. The Lord has done No, 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 no. You, because your testimony is to prove, is to show the physical manifestation that this is what God has done in my life. So four things Jesus speaks about. First, he says, pray. Everybody say pray. Believe. Everybody say believe. believe. Receive. Believe. And then have. All of the four are actions. When I pray, I'm taking an action. When I believe, I'm taking an action. When I receive, I'm taking an action. When I have, I'm taking an action. Don't substitute fasting for these four. Otherwise, it will be hunger. Don't just go, you're hungry, you're hungry, you're hungry. And then when it's time to pray, you squeeze your eye, and then tears are coming. God says, you haven't asked me for anything. You are crying, but what do you want? What do you want? Yeah, Lord, you know, you know, you know. What do you want? Ah! That's not prayer, my friend. That's, that, it's, it's a nice gesture, but it's not prayer. Be specific. And when you ask, you don't ask, Lord, do it, 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 Lord, do it. Did he hear the first time you said it? Yes. I, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Then Tuesday, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, the same thing. I've come. Wednesday, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Thursday, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Friday, oh Lord, oh Lord, next week to be continued. Oh Lord, oh. the same thing. There is a place for intercessory prayer that continues, but you must not continue praying because you doubt that God heard you the first time. We continue praying to show the intensity of our prayer. That's why we fast. But the power behind all of it is faith. If there is no faith, your intensity is good, but it's achieving nothing. So when you pray, you believe. And that's why you cannot have a powerful prayer life until you have a powerful Bible life. You must be strong in the word in order to have strong prayers. All right? You ready to pray for one minute before we go for communion?
Do you have something you want to talk to God about? Do you believe God can do it? Then apply this into your life. Lift up your hands to God. Let's stand up. Let's pray as we get ready for communion before we partake. Lift up your hands to God and do what you have to do. Do what you have to do. Based on what you've heard, do what you have to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.